Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Attentive Dragon, and welcome to Let's Play Ultima 6 The False Prophet, the classic computer role playing game from 1990. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the story of the previous games of Ultimas 1 through uh, 5, I've created a, another video, part 0 of this Let's Play series, and you can find a link to that down in the description below. Um, but for the rest of you, everybody else, let's get started with the uh, Let's Play. And here we are in the boot-up sequence of Ultima 6 The False Prophet, with the familiar old Origin Systems uh, logo. A Lord British production. And here we are with the Avatar safe in his uh, house five years after the end of Ultima 5. I should point out at the, at, at the end of Ultima 5, um, he comes home to an empty house. It turns out that while he was gone rescuing Lord British for months, uh, somebody broke in and stole everything he owned. Um, I'm guessing the Avatar must have come home with at least one bag full of gold coins because he looks like he was able to refurnish pretty nicely. Uh, there's his vinyl record collection, a phonograph, CD player, television, and some really nice late 80s artwork with a zebra centaur street walker. <laughs> Either way, five years have passed, um, and as far as the Avatar knows, everything's going well in Britannia, and Lord British is back on his throne and ruling in peace. So let's get started. Upon your world, five seasons have passed since your triumphant homecoming from Britannia. You have traded the Avatar's life of peril and adventure for the lonely serenity of a world at peace. But television supermen cannot take the place of friends who died at your side. Outside, a chill wind rises. Note the very nice Ultima 5 uh, box art on his wall. And the Domino's Pizza box on the ground. You know, the Avatar might be a champion of the Eight Virtues, but I'm guessing cleanliness isn't one of them. Outside, a chill wind rises. And in moments, the storm is upon you. Tongues of lightning lash the sky, conducting an unceasing crescendo of thunder. In a cataclysm of sound and light, a bolt of searing blue fire strikes the earth. Lightning among the stones? Is this a sign from distant Britannia? You bolt from your house, stumbling, running blind in the storm, into the forest, down the path, through the rain, to the stones. Near the stones, the smell of damp, blasted earth hangs in the air. In a frozen moment of lightning-struck daylight, you glimpse a tiny obsidian stone in the midst of the circle. Wondering, you pick it up. And from the heart of the stones, a softly glowing door ascends in silence. Exultant memories wash over you as you clutch the stone. When last you saw an orb such as this, it was cast down by Lord British to banish the tyrant Blackthorn. But your joy soon gives way to apprehension. The gate to Britannia has always been blue, as blue as the morning sky. Abruptly, the portal quivers and begins to sink into the ground. Its crimson light wanes. Desperation makes the decision an easy one. Here we have the beginning of Ultima 6, The False Prophet, with the Avatar being summoned by persons unknown through a irregular moon gate to places unknown. And we'll rejoin the Avatar in a minute and find out what happens. Uh, but in the meantime, here's the boot screen. Introduction will take us to the next part of the story, but we're going to hold off on that for just a moment because first we have to create a character. Um, if we'd played previous games, we could transfer a character for a stat boost. Knowledge with the self-explanatory and journey onward is how we continue with our game once we've started one. But let's go ahead and create a character and get started. By what name shalt thou be called? Well, let's just be a little bit uncreative and call ourselves attentive. Now one of the cool things about the Ultima series, especially Ultimas uh, up through 
um, Ultima 7 and Ultima 7 Part 2 was that you could customize your character um, in a few different ways. The early Ultimas were just like D&D, where you could assign numbers to different stats, make your character male, female, and any of several races. Ultimas 4, 5, and 6, uh, you were relegated to being a human, but you could still decide between being a male or a female. And starting with Ultima 6, you could actually you know, see graphical representations of your character. And it was kind of a neat thing. If you take a look at some of these different types of portraits... this out of the way. It was a nice way of making the game a little bit more immersive. You could really choose your own avatar, the character to represent you the best. And for the men, we have these pictures. A lot of really cool different choices. Now for this playthrough, I'm going to go ahead and stick with uh, what would become known as the default quote-unquote avatar um, for later parts of the series. But that was one of the cool things about this game, is that you could really make the avatar your own, with any name you wanted and any face you wanted. Now this next sequence is a rehash of what happens at the beginning of Ultimus 4 and 5. This is in some ways a flashback to what happened to the Avatar um, before he came to Britannia and before he started his adventure. It's the way of doing a character creation screen here, where by answering a series of questions, you get to decide which of the eight virtues of the Avatar you value the most highly. Um, we're not saying that any of the virtues are less important, but whichever one is the highest is going to determine the layout of your, stat of your statistics, what what's higher in strength, intelligence, and dexterity. And we'll do that in just a moment. Welcome, O oh Seeker. A lonely stroll along an unfamiliar forest path brings you upon a curious gypsy wagon, its exotic colors dappled in the summer shade. A woman's voice rings out with friendship, beckoning you across the wagon's threshold and as it happens, into another life. At last thou hast come to fulfill thy destiny, the gypsy says. She smiles, as if in great relief. Sit before me now, and I shall pour the light of virtue into the shadows of thy future. On a wooden table, eight bottles stand, a rainbow of bubbling liquids. Behold the virtues of the Avatar, the woman says. Let us begin the casting. And this changes from game to game. In Ultima 4, it was tarot cards. In Ultima 5, it was actually bowls of steaming liquid. In this one, it's a, various, it's a variety of potions. But either way, the effect's the same. We're going to choose and eliminate virtues based on questions. And again, there are no right and no wrong answers. It's just what's most important to us. And if we want to be a little mercenary about it, how we want our stats to lay out if we want to plan ahead. During battle, thou art ordered to guard thy commander's empty tent. The battle goes poorly, and thou dost yearn to aid thy fellows. Dost thou valiantly enter the battle, or honor thy post as guard? We'll go ahead and pick the uh, virtue of valor. Thou hast been taught to preserve all life as sacred. A man lies fatally stung by a venomous serpent. He prays for a merciful death. Dost thou show compassion and end his pain, or heed thy spiritual beliefs and turn away. And we're going to go ahead and pick compassion. Thou art an elderly wealthy merchant. Thy end is near. Dost thou sacrifice all thy wealth to feed hundreds of starving children, receiving public adulation, or humbly live out thy life, willing thy fortune to thy heirs? And we'll pick the virtue of sacrifice. A merchant owes thy friend money, now long past due. Thou dost see the same merchant drop a purse of gold. Dost thou honestly return the purse intact, or justly give thy friend a portion of the gold first? And we'll pick honesty. Thou dost manage to disarm thy mortal enemy in a duel. He is at thy mercy. Dost thou show compassion by permitting him to yield, or slay him as expected of a valiant duelist? And we're going to go ahead and pick Compassion. Thee and thy friend are valiant but penniless warriors. Thou both set forth to slay a mighty dragon. Thy friend dost think he slew it, but the killing blow was thine. Dost thou honestly claim the reward, or sacrifice the gold for the sake of thy friendship? 
and for this question, we'll answer with honesty. Entrusted to deliver an uncounted purse of gold, thou dost meet a poor beggar. Dost thou deliver the gold honestly, knowing the trust in thee was well placed, or show compassion and give the beggar a coin, knowing it won't be missed? And we'll go ahead and pick compassion for our final virtue. The path of the Avatar lies beneath thy feet, worthy attentive, the gypsy intones. With a mysterious smile, she passes you the flask of shimmering liquids. Drink of these waters, and go forth among our people, who shall receive thee in joy. As you drink from the flask, vertigo overwhelms you. A soothing mist obscures the gypsy's face, and you sink without fear into an untroubled sleep. Wake in a different time upon another world shore. Though the Avatar's quests bring you both triumph and tragedy, never do you stray from the path of the Eight Virtues. The sagas of Ultima IV and Ultima V chronicle your perilous travels, and your name and your deeds are written forever among Britannia's legends. Finally, tempered by your struggles against the enemies of virtue, you are proven ready to answer the epic challenge of Ultima 6. So now that we've created our character, let's go ahead and rejoin the Avatar. And the last that we saw of him, he was stepping through a mysterious red moon gate, not knowing what's on the other side. Dazed, you emerge from the portal to find yourself standing on a desolate plain. Nearby rests a massive, rune-struck altar, shrouded in moonlit fog. At first, the plane is still. Then, a hundred voices raise a slow, death-like song, drawing closer and closer with each passing moment. You are seized by an urge to run. But you have no place to go. Before you can offer a protest to the creatures who surround you, Scaly claws grasp your body. With unearthly strength, the monsters bind you to the altar stone. Kneeling, the hordes sway and chant as a stately winged nightmare steps forward. The, le the leader unwraps a velvet-covered, brass-bound book and recites from it in a formal, stilted tongue. Shouts and jeers explode from the masses as the priest slams shut the book. In his hand, a malignant dagger drips with moonlight. You close your eyes. A dying scream, certainly your own, curdles the air. Cat calls the dagger a scream. Death. Pandemonium. Shrieks of rage, of terror. Inevitable, an impossibility emerges. You are still alive. Silent red light fills the darkness. There is the wooden clack of a crossbow, and a violet fletched rose blooms in the priest's barren forehead. Friendly faces vault from a newborn moon gate, while a rain of quarrels holds the furious mob at bay. The Knight Dupree's sword flashes twice in the darkness, slicing away your bonds. Quickly, old friend, to the gate! Accompanied by the swordsman Shamino and a grinning crossbow-wielding Yolo the Bard, Dupree thrusts a spare sword into your hand. Snatching the fallen priest's book, Yolo dives into the redness with Shamino at his heels. The howling throng surges forward, all of one terrible mind. The gate wanes rapidly as you and Dupree charge through. But not rapidly enough. From the mob's vanguard, three of the abominations scramble toward the gate. Driven by fury, the creatures hurl their bodies into the portal's last hand span of light.
we are. Welcome to Ultima 6. Looks like the Avatar and his companions have appeared uh, in Lord British's throne room, along with one, two, three of these creatures. And we're in battle mode to begin. So we start off the game in the middle of a battle. Let me go ahead and briefly uh, describe the screen to you. Obviously, this is the uh, play screen here, where you can see your character and things going on. Down here is a list of commands that you can use. Attacking, casting a spell, speaking with someone, looking at things, picking something up, dropping something, pushing something, using something, resting at night, or starting and exiting combat mode. Over here we have our uh, characters, as well as their hit points. And we'll look at that more later. But to begin, let's go ahead and start the fight. The Avatar is going to go ahead and attack, move up and attack this guy. Now for this first battle, we don't have control over our party members. We will be able to uh, change that setting later and be able to move people individually, or go ahead and leave them in a, sort of an auto combat mode while they're while they'll where they will uh, sort of do an AI where they'll attack whichever enemy they think is best based on some rules you can set. One of them's dead. The other one was killed as well. So we're going to go ahead and exit combat mode now that we've killed all of our foes. Now you might be asking yourself why Lord British, this knight, and this maze just sat there while you were fought in the middle of the throne and didn't even try to help you, and I have no idea why that happened. <laughs> anyway, we're going to go ahead and look at this guy and see uh, what he's carrying. A club and a leather helm. And this lets me a chance to show you our inventory screen. Each character has a little paper doll letting you arm them. You can put a helmet here, a weapon, shield, boots, rings, um, some sort of neck protection. And um, as you can see, each of our characters is armed in different ways. Now, since the Avatar doesn't have anything, he's going to go ahead and grab that helmet and put it on. And I'm sure they're really dying to speak with me, um, but since they just sat on their butts while I was fighting for my life here, they can wait their turn until I'm done looting the corpses. Now it looks like the gargoyle dropped a boomerang. That's pretty cool. Move the helmet over and grab the boomerang. Boomerangs are useful weapons uh, early in the game because they can um, be used as a ranged weapon without using up any ammunition like bows or crossbows do. So they're, they're good early in the game as a uh, way of letting some weaker characters uh, get some hits in. Well, now that we're here, let's go ahead and uh, talk to some people. You see the noble ruler of Britannia. Attentive! Tis good to see thee again. Much hath happened since thou last departed our realm. But I must make sure tis truly thee, even though I sat on my butt while you fought horrible creatures in the middle of my throne room, and I did nothing to help you. Only the true Avatar would know it was contained in the compendium I sent. Now, uh, this was basically the game's version of copy protection back in 1990. Um, since the game came on six uh, floppy disks, it was actually pretty easy to copy. You know, you could just copy the floppies. In fact, the game encouraged you to make copies for, uh, you know, safekeeping. Um, but in order to keep people from sharing the game and not purchasing their own legitimate copies, it came with a detailed manual that you would have to look up answers in in order for uh, British to talk to you. He wants to know how we can fend off rotworms. Well, according to our compendium here, I have a hard copy of it still. Rotworms are fended off by a pass of your torch. How doth sea serpents attack? Well, they'll attack with magical fireballs and a violent physical swipe of the tail. So let's just go ahead and say fireballs. And you'll notice um, when we're typing things out, the game only looks at the first four characters. So instead of fireballs, I can just type fire. Thou art correct. What creature are wisps oft mistaken for? 
and according to this, they're often mistaken for the harmless forest firefly. Ah, tis thee indeed attentive. Take this key. It will unlock the gatehouse by the southern entrance to the castle. Then you can use the lever inside to raise the portcullis, and the crank will lower the drawbridge. The same key will also let you into the sewers under the castle. Now let me tell thee what hath transpired since thy last visit. The vast underworld from which thou didst rescue me hath collapsed. Yet still there are forces of evil abroad in the land. Britannia is under attack by gargoyles such as those thou just fought. They have been coming up through the dungeons. Thus far they have been mainly been attacking the shrines of the Eight Virtues. When the Shrine of Compassion didst fall, Sir Joffrey sent a party to free it. Didst do thou ask him of this mission, perhaps thou canst prove of some assistance. Whilst thou art here, I have a room in the castle set aside for thy personal use. Tis on the west wing of the castle, just south of mine own chambers. I have had my servants place some equipment there, in case thou shouldst have need of it. Of course thou mayst feel free to borrow anything in my castle, if thou shouldst need it. Lastly, any time thou dost need healing, do thou but ask me. If thou dost wish me to repeat all this later, thou need but ask. Well, the first thing we'll do is we will ask him for healing, because we were wounded in that battle. Lord British waves his hand, and your whole party is healed. Now, he mentioned our friend Geoffrey, who is the knight standing over here to the, uh, to the right. He is captain of the guard. Well, it looks like he's moving up in the world. <laughs> so you say the gargoyles were attacking the shrines. By now the gargoyles may have captured them all. Thou must hurry if thou wouldst foil their evil schemes. And he also mentioned the virtues. Now you'll notice as we talk, certain words are highlighted a different color, and that's a way of letting you know that this character has more to say about that particular subject. Sort of a hint of what things you can ask them later. Stay strong in thy commitment to the eight virtues. It is our belief in them that sets us apart from the cruel invaders who would destroy all that we hold dear. Now, uh, one of the things, um, all the games from Ultima's uh, 4 onward let you uh, ask characters uh, three simple questions. Name? I am Lord British, as thou knowest well. Job? Thanks to thee, I sit once more upon the throne of Britannia. Though tis a heavy burden in these such troubled times as these. Well, it's asking about these troubled times. The gargoyles are indeed the greatest threat our realm has ever known. We are fortunate indeed that fate hath brought thee here in our hour of need. You mentioned gargoyles. Perhaps thou canst drive these vile creatures back into the bowels of the earth from whence they came. All our efforts thus far have availed us not. And the last thing you can ask, apart from name and job, is bye. May fortune favor thee. That's how we quit out of conversations. As you can see, British has given us a nice key, so we'll go ahead and use that. But we also still have this item. Let's look at it. Thou dost see the Orb of the Moons. Now, the last time we saw an orb like that was in British's possession, so let's go ahead and ask him about that. Good morning, attentive. What wouldst thou speak of? The Orb. You show Lord British the Black Stone. Hmm, I have such a stone, as thou may recall. I did not know that there were more such orbs. It will serve thee well in thy travels if thou dost learn to master its powers. To open a gate, use the stone, and carefully position it a few feet from thee. Thou wilt discover that the placement is the key. In the proper positions, the stone canst conjure gates to take thee to numerous destinations. Well, that sounds definitely very useful. Now, let's go ahead and talk with Geoffrey here. You see a tall, handsome man. Geoffrey was, in previous games, one of the companions of the Avatar and, jo and joined with us on many of our adventures. He's also the uh, companion who represents the val the excuse me the virtue of valor. I'm glad to see thee attentive. Perhaps thou canst prevail where others could not. I sent a party of ten to recapture the shrine of compassion from the gargoyles. Alas, they failed dismally. The survivors are recuperating in the town of Cove. Thou wouldst do well to speak with them first. Mayhap they learn something which might aid thee. I must confess, I fear the worst. The gargoyles are such powerful foes, and they are spreading so fast. Perhaps the end of the realm is nigh. Good luck, and my prayers go with thee. Well, that doesn't seem dire at all, jeez. 
Um, but at least we have a lead, so we'll have to head for the town of Cove to see what we can find out from the survivors of that attack. You see a concerned-looking mage. Hail to thee, my lord, and well met. Twas I who learned of thy peril through my mystic arts, so that aid might be sent unto thee. Well, thank you. Yolo, I saw that thou didst find a book. Might I examine it? Certainly, my lord. Perhaps thou canst make better sense of it than I, says Yolo. Strange. This has a picture on its cover of a gargoyle standing with one foot on the chest of a slain human. This is interesting. It's written in a language I know not. Take it to Moriah at the Lyceum, the finest scribe on the great council of wizards. Moriah, for those who play the previous games, is also one of the companions of the Avatar, and she is the character that represents the virtue of honesty. She has studied many languages, and perhaps she can decipher this book for thee. One more thing, Avatar. I notice that thou didst arrive through a red gateway. Didst dost thou have the stone that opened the gate? Well, yes, we do. From whence could it have come? The gargoyles, perhaps? Best ask Lord British about it. I believe he has nah, some knowledge of such items. Well, fortunately, we already asked British about it, so... At this point, it looks like we're all set. We have two possible paths that we could follow. <clears throat> we could follow Jeffrey's advice and head for Cove, and that might give us some insight into the gargoyles and uh, how to defeat them and from people who actually fought them on the front lines. Alternately, we could follow Nystal's advice and head for Moonglow and talk to Mariah. She may be able to give us some insight to this book that the gargoyles have dropped, and we might get find out more about them and maybe discover some weakness or find out why they're attacking. So, we've got some choices ahead of us. But for now, I think that's good enough for this first episode. Thanks for joining me. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, and look forward to future episodes. Um, I will see all of you next time.